100 black men. These men may or may not have been slaves. Blacks who came with the Spaniards were often free Spanish blacks. Some were artisan, some were craftsmen. The Spanish, the French, and the British vied for control of Pensacola and engaged in a literal tug of war over the territory for years. In 1773, the British gained control of Pensacola and held the city for 20 years, but the Spaniards wanted it back. So Spanish forces led by Bernardo de Galvez and accompanied by Salvador Ruby, a Louisiana Creole, a black man, sailed into Pensacola. Ruby and his Spanish Creole and Negro soldiers fought with Galvez at the siege of Pensacola and wrestled the city from the British. Salvador Ruby stayed in Pensacola and commanded a militia of mulatto and Negro soldiers and established a family, many of whose descendants still live in Pensacola today, most notably the Ruby Sunday family. While the Spaniards ruled, some blacks, the Creoles, prospered in Pensacola. They owned businesses and homes. They were free. But the Spaniards lost Pensacola to the Americans, and remember, the British still dreamed of control. The British lured black Pensacolians to an outpost at Prospect Bluff that became known as Fort Negro, where they took a last stand against the Americans following the War of 1812. The Fort Negro outpost was commanded by a black Pensacolian named Antonio Garcon. More than 200 black men, women, and children joined by Indians and a small international army held out until General Andrew Jackson ordered Fort Negro destroyed. It was destroyed May 14, 1816. A black man called Abraham, who was owned by Dr. E.A. Sierra, distinguished himself by fighting at Fort Negro and by serving as a translator after the Seminole War. He was later freed by the Americans for his service. In the early 20th century, Sam Charles owned and operated two stores and booteries. One of the stores was on South Palafox Street at the location that would later become Trader John's. And one was prominently in the Belmont de Villiers neighborhood. Sam Charles amassed a small fortune as a store owner and a real estate investor. A marker located prominently in downtown Pensacola tells the story of Sam Charles. Among Pensacola's free people of color were two significant women. Julie Panton was a businesswoman who sold candles and pastries for a living. She owned a house that is now called the Julie Panton Cottage in downtown Pensacola. She was probably a special woman in the household of the Panton family. Euphrosine Inyard was a property owner and buyer of slaves, whom she helped later to become free men and free women. She once owned what we now know as the Dorothy Walton House. Black Pensacolians were here with DeLuna. They were here with D'Ariola. They were here with Galvez. Black men and women have been here from the beginning. The Americans who gained control following the Spanish departure were hostile to people's free people of color. They created laws called the American Territorial Laws, which limited the freedoms of black people. The Florida legislator enacted other laws, among them the Guardian Law, which placed white guardians to watch the free colors, some you see on the stage. The white Americans feared the free colored people would incite the slaves in the area to revolt. 
Many free people of color left Pensacola and went to Mexico. Some descendants of free Pensacola blacks still live in Mexico today. During the Civil War, when Union troops were firing on Pensacola, the Confederates burned the Navy Yard, Forts McCree and Barrancas, and supplies in the city, and most Pensacolians fled the city until only about 40 people remained. Among those who remained were men who would become the founders of John the Baptist Church. Earlier, they worshipped at a church that served as the meeting place for both black and white parishioners. During the war, many black soldiers were quartered at Fort Pickens. Years before, blacks had made the millions of bricks that the Pensacola fort, forts were made from. After the Civil War and during Reconstruction, two local Pensacolian blacks, four local Pensacolian blacks, were elected to the Florida legislature: Charlie Rouse, Salvador Pons, Zebulon Elijah, and John Sunday Jr., a wealthy property owner. They all served in the Florida legislature during Reconstruction. Salvador Pons, a Creole man, also served as mayor of Pensacola during Reconstruction, according to a marker in St. Michael Cemetery. Other black businesses existed on Pensacola Street, that is, until Jim Crow laws drove them into segregated sections of town. Just before the turn of the 19th century to the 20th century, Amanda Mercedes Sunday Ruby founded St. Joseph Church, and though the black population declined over the years, thousands of families joined the other established black families in Pensacola. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the seven spirits of the heroes. Mm -hmm.